All right, guys. So I'm going to show you how to uh, download a model, import it into a spree, and go ahead and uh, create your features and position it and everything. So, so basically, we start off. We go to 3Distributed.com. We're going to go over here to the CAD CAM tab, and we're going to go ahead and use this triangle carriage plate. All right. So we're going to download it. It pops up in the bottom left hand of your screen. I'm going to say show in folder. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy the triangle carriage plate. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go into we'll go into a spree. All right, so in a spree, um, I already have my mill template open. What I'm gonna do is just hit open, and I'm gonna go ahead and find this file. Uh, we'll just say desktop, and I'm gonna right click, paste that 3D model that we downloaded and had copied, and we're just gonna open it up right here. And make sure that you check merge. Okay, so the model comes up like this. So this is the model. This is the triangle carriage plate. And it has a couple of things I don't like. Let me fix this. Okay, so you got something that looks like this. I'm going to hit F8 and put an isometric view. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this as triangle carriage plate. Okay, so I have triangle carriage play and it's saved in. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a, a layer and name it solid. And I'm gonna click on the model, right click, go to copy, and I'm gonna change the attribute. I'm gonna move it to the to the solid layer. Hit OK. So now if I if I click anywhere or hit escape, it'll deselect the model, right? So if I go to my layers, I should be able to uncheck this solid and it should disappear. Okay, so it works. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, uh, a new layer. I'm going to name it stock. I'm going to go ahead and hide the solid for now. I'm going to hit F7 on my keyboard. Okay, so I hit F7 on my keyboard, and I'm going to go ahead and draw a point. Let's put it at our Cartesian location. Let's put it at uh, X uh, 4.5, Y minus 4. I'll hit apply, and notice that we have this little point drawn up right here, right? Okay, so now we'll go ahead and go to, we'll draw a rectangle. And we'll place it right here. Okay, so this is our stock. Uh, I'm going to hit escape to exit out of the rectangle function. And let's go ahead and select the geometry. And let's go to create at the top of our screen. Solid modeler. And here's our solid modeler toolbar right here. So I'm going to use the extrude function. Uh, if I hit F8 and put in isometric view. Notice that the green stock is going up above the z-axis surface. So I'm going to do is I'm going to click reverse direction. See how it pops? It goes down now. That's what I want it to do. I want to, the z0 to be on top of the stock material. Okay, so this is going to be a quarter inch extrude. And I hit OK. So 
Because our stock layer is active, everything we did is on the stock layer, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and tell the software that this is the stock that we need to actually make the part. So I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my simulator, to simulation parameters, go over to the solids tab, and we're going to create stock from the solid. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll select the feature, click on it, hit add, and hit OK. Now if I hit simulate, you can see the stocks in the simulator, that's what we want. Okay, so the software has it now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hide this stock. I don't really need that anymore. And bring the solid back. Okay, so if you look at the solid, it's above the yellow line, right? Uh, so I'm going to click on it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to translate it down. Go to copy. Let's go to translate. We're going to move it down to Z minus 0.25. So what I'll do is I'll hit OK. Now I brought it over there. I'm also going to go ahead. I'm going to make a layer and name it Smash. Okay, so Smash is my active layer. So what I'll do is I'll click on V Solid. I'm gonna right click, go to copy, and we're gonna use our Smash tool. So I'm gonna smash into a wireframe. Hit OK. So I have something that looks like oops, looks like this. Okay, so this is my top view. Uh, the reason I did this is so that I can actually measure it. So let's go ahead and measure it from here to here. Oops. Use our dimension tool. So I have 0 0.295 and... This is 0.296. <clears throat> so, I'm going to hit escape to exit the measuring tool. I'm going to select everything, right click, go to copy, and let's move, let's translate and move everything. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead, let's move it a little extra. The way our stock is, we need a little extra room. So, I'm going to go x.4, y minus. I'm going to hit OK. So I have something that looks like this. Don't need the dimensions anymore. So the material is in the stock. Now my solid's still over here. So I'm just going to click on the solid again. Hit copy. I'm going to use the same translate printers. I'm just going to hit OK. So it looks like that. I don't really need it. But you can see how the geometry, the shape of the part, sits in the stock. Okay. Uh, we could probably move it down a little bit more. We'll go extra, uh, extra hundred thousandths on the X and extra hundred or extra two hundred on the Y. So let's go ahead and try that. Uh, I'm gonna hide the stock again. I'm gonna select this geometry. I'm gonna bring my solid back and hit Control and select the solid also. Right click. We'll go extra hundred thousandths on the X. We'll go down minus 0.2. Hit OK. So if I bring my stock back, it's going to be in there like that. We'll, we'll say that's OK. OK, so, so far it looks like this. It's going to be cut out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hide my solid because I do not need it. For, for what I'm doing right here, I do not need any of that. I just need the wireframe for now. Uh, if I tilt my wireframe, say I put it in front view. Uh, if you want if you want to bring up your view window, hit F12. But I have the geometry that goes down. I really don't need that. The only thing I really need is 
Let's see. I'm gonna select all that and hit delete. The reason why is I only need this top plane. I don't even need this. So I got something that looks like this. And to be honest, these holes right here, you don't really have to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and move these up. I'm gonna translate them up back to the uh, surface. So we'll go ahead and move them up uh, 0.165. Let's right. change that back. Uh, make sure X, and, X is on zero and Y is on zero. I'm gonna hit okay. All right, so I have something that looks like this, okay? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make a layer and name it Chains. And we'll go over here to our Features, Manual P-Top. We'll go ahead and select this. We'll go to stop. It stops over here. The chain looks a little bit off. Let's let's delete that. Let's change that. Uh, I'm gonna go back to manual chain, manual p top. Make sure when you hover over the uh, the arc that you get that center snap point. Sometimes you'll get close, but it's not there. See how it pops up? Right here and here. So I'll go ahead and go to stop. Now I have my P top. This is a 5mm hole, so I'm just type in 5mm holes. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to. I'm going to have a manual p-top for my 8mm hole, which is right here. So I'll go back to... I'll go back to manual p-top. Come over here to the center. I'm going to hit e-stop. I'll name that... 8mm hole. Alright, so I have these counter boards that's going to be in the model. If you remember what it looked like. Uh, I'm going to actually use a contour. So what we'll do is we'll drill a 5mm hole through. And then we'll drop a 316 uh, a, uh, in mil and do a contour. Alright, so I'm going to make a chain with this geometry. Go to auto chain. I'll name that left counterboard. And we'll go to the next one. You know, let's change the direction of that. Let's make it reverse. And we'll do the same thing on this right counterboard. We'll change the direction. Name it right counter board. And let's get this outer perimeter now. Well, let's just rename that outer outer perimeter. Okay, so the next thing you do is go ahead and start making toolpaths.